Caller ID. According to just about every English dictionary, the meaning of investment reads something like this. An act of devoting time, effort, and energy to a particular undertaking with the expectation of a worthwhile result. You see, ties, like fine wine and real estate, are good investments not because ties will appreciate in value, but because putting in the time and energy to maintain them is worthwhile. And these are some ways that you can do that. You can double the lifespan of your ties if you treat it like an investment. Now, unless you have an extreme fear of being judged by the public or you're at a cocktail party, if you're wearing your tie and you're around food, you're eating a lunch or dinner or something, take the tie, unbutton one of your buttons, tuck the tie in to prevent it from getting in your food. Because man, I've been there. I've, I've eaten something that I didn't think I could get on my tie and somehow I got it on my tie. So that's just an easy way to not have to take off your tie or throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier. And that's a terrible thing anyway. Inevitably, it'll slip off and fall into your coffee. Woo! And this is a pet peeve of mine. Please take off your ties in the order that you tied them. Do not go like this and pull it all the way through. This is lazy. This is harmful. I, mean, I can't tell you. These are delicate silks we're dealing with here. These are inner linings that are meant to hold your tie in place, not be stretched like a cord. You will stretch out the weaves of your ties and their inner linings. The ties will never be shaped the same if you make a habit of this. These rough labels can actually pick and snag at the fabric of your tie. You don't want that, do you? Speaking of picks and snags, another way that you can prevent those is having a good tie rack. I've got a video on that, but having a tie rack that's got pegs made of a quality material or that's wrapped in rubber and having one that's not going to affect the way that your tie hangs on the rack. Tie racks can work against you. If they're not made right, or if they're not made with the best materials, there could be things on there like the hanger pegs or the bar itself could pick and snag at your ties. Also, you wanna be careful of hangnails, rough skin, brick walls, sandpaper, any kinds of materials that will grip onto the threads and Whiskers, whiskers will do it too. After you take off a tie, you can prevent that dimple where the knot meets the top of the tie here. Sometimes there's a crease when you take the tie off there. And a way that you could prevent that is roll it up gently in your hand while the tie still has some residual body heat from your neck. And then massage that area with your hand. This can help to reduce the look of that and when you put it back on the rack, that crease won't set in the tie. I can even recommend not putting the tie right back on the rack immediately. Leave it off for a while, keep it rolled up. This is actually a perfect way to relax the fibers of the inner linings inside so that gravity isn't pulling them down at one fixed point. If you've had some ties that have been there a while, show them some TLC, roll them up. And nothing grinds my gears quite like a tie that's chock full of wrinkles. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes wrinkles get pretty deep set. You could try a steamer, put a light steam through the ties, something that's not as overkill as the dry cleaner, if the tie doesn't need to be dry cleaned, but it needs some love on the wrinkles. Steamers can work, but they're not a guarantee. It's worth a try though. Just do it sparingly. If you go too hard on the steamer, you could waterlog your tie and it would be like throwing it in the washing machine. Heresy. Look, if you've got suits, you, if you've got ties, you've probably got suits. I just gave it away. Great. Here are some other ways to protect your investments like suits. Here are my thoughts. 